بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طلبة الماجستير طب الأطفال السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اليوم نبدأ محاضرة بدياترك إي سي جي أكورد كودا سكجول سو يو سي هنا فيرس سلايد دي بدياترك إي سي جي ديفر فروم ذات أوف أدولت uh, and the following criteria, as you see here, in, at birth, the right ventricle is larger and thicker than the left ventricle. So, the major work uh, is lying on the right ventricle because it, it uh, pushes blood against high resistance, high pulmonary resistance. So, the ECG. You may see a picture of right ventricular hypertrophy in adult with marked right axis deviation and dominant R wave in V1 and T wave inversion from V1 to V3. The PR interval and the QRS duration are shorter than that of adult due to small cardiac size. Heart rate accordingly will be faster than that of adult, especially in infant and unit. As the child gets older, the uh, the rate will uh, decrease. Next slide. Common finding on pediatric ECG, you may see them uh, as abnormal in uh, adult, as I told you, but here may be normal findings. So the heart rate is greater than 100 beat per minute, the right axis deviation. 90 and above plus T wave inversion V1 to V3. This may persist for four years, which is normal. Dominant R wave in V1, as I told you, because the right ventricle is, is the main here, main, one, main ventricle functioning in comparison to the adult, where the left ventricle is the dominant ventricle. RSR pattern may be seen in V1, which is normal. Mark sinus arrhythmias due to sympathetic flow and parasympathetic. So there may be change in the heart rate according to the breathing and activity. Short PR interval less than 120 milliseconds and the QRS duration less than 80 milliseconds. Slightly peak P wave is uh, less than 3 millimeter in height and uh, is normal and if less than six months of age. Slightly longer QT, corrected QT interval, 49 second, 0.49, or simply 490 milliseconds in less than six months. Q waves in the inferior and left of the cordial lead. Q wave when present in adult may indicate infarction, especially the three. You see here an ECG traced from healthy, normal, two and a half year old girl shows many typical features of pediatric ECG. When you, when you calculate the heart rate from RR interval and you see the, the small square, here 5, 5 and 1, around 11. You divide the 300 over this, it will give you a heart rate of 110 beat per minute. The dominant R wave in V1, you see here the R wave, R wave here, R wave here, one V1, V2, V3 dominant. RSR part, especially in V1, you see here, partial bundle branch block, right bundle branch block in V1, and T wave inversion as I told you, in right chest lead, here and here. This this wave, you see T wave, which is normal finding. While in older children and adult, it is abnormal. Here you see an ECG uh, with, of an infant with right ventricular hypertrophy, as you see, tall R wave in 
right chest lead v1 and v2 v4 r also and uh, deep s deep s here not the tall r wave in the right precordial and deep s in v6 here v6 should be less than this normally so the positive t wave in v4 r positive t wave here as i told you uh, v and v1 are also characteristic of right ventricular hypertrophy. so the features of right ventricular hypertrophy include tall r wave in right chest lead and deep s in v6 this is the basically basic principles plus others we, uh, we, we told you the the t wave is positive in v4 r next one you see here a normal ecg you check for the uh, normal infant with tall and tall r and small s wave in v4 r here small s wave and tall r wave normal infant and also in v1 see here um, the inverted t wave in these leads uh, here this is the T wave you see here the T wave a dominant R wave is also present in V6 here so this is the normal finding the other ECG here is a normal also relatively tall R waves here and here not relative to R wave and the inversion of T wave in V4R this one Inverted T wave and in V1, which is normal finding, as I told you. Here, normal adult ECG, you know the dominant S wave in V1. This is S wave in V1. And this pattern in infant will indicate the presence of left ventricular hypertrophy. So it should be tall R wave here in infant. But here, because of this is an adult and there is dominance of the left ventricle you see here in v5 and v6 there is a dominant r wave here this is the normal ecg in five year olds as you see a normal is 10 years old and see the progression from the right to the left the forces of contraction you check the uh, v6 here and v6 here you see tall tall v uh, lead, lead uh, the r wave is positive and tall uh, the right ventricle dominance of the new unit and infant is gradually replaced by left ventricle dominance so that by three to four years the t wave will be will be upright t wave here t wave will be upright And here progression to adult here in this diagram you see the places of the chest lead chest lead position here in the fourth intercostal space v1 and v2 this to the right it's to the left in between uh, v2 and v4 you check in between you put v v3 here as the side of the nipple the V4 and the anterior chest and axillary will be V6 and these are the main limb lead left arm right arm and the left legs left legs so this is called lead 3 and this is lead 1 and this is AVL with AVR this dot, dotted line AVF so you check to uh, to draw the axis and we will talk about it uh, later on so in this figure you see the the segmentation of the ecg you see the pr interval from the beginning of the p wave to the beginning of a qrs they call it pr interval 
Here, the QRS started from the beginning of, Q, of, of a Q wave to the end of S wave, called the QRS, QRS complex. From the beginning of T wave to the end, this area, to the U wave, called ST segment, ST segment. From the beginning of a Q wave to the end of T wave, or beginning of U wave, because they could call it QT interval. QT interval. From R wave, from this complex to this complex, they call it RR interval. RR interval. RR interval. So the each small square uh, indicate point oh four second. Well, the large square, which consists of five small square, its duration is 0.2 second. 0.2 second. So here, when you read an ECG, you have to check the voltage of the paper used for the ECG. Here, uh, don't forget to check for midclavicular line P4 at the site of the nipple. Here, anterior axillary line. And this the mid axillary line when you use the chest chest lead standard chest lead. Now to the right ventricle normally extend to the right side of the sternum to appropriate this to play right ventricle potentials. I mean electricity here ECG for children and the under five age group must include an alternate lead V4R which is located here. So next slide, uh, when you see an ECG, you have to check for the rhythm, the rate, and the axis, and the PR interval, the P wave, and so on. So you check for the rhythm, the SI node, take the dominance of the electricity of the heart, and uh, start from there. The firing, the firing machine of firing spot is the SI node, sinoatrial node. So start with atrial depolarization, start from the sinoatrial node, and this requires P wave preceding each QRS complex with a constant PR interval. Normal P wave axis 0 to plus 90 degree, i.e. P wave is upright in lead 1 and AVF. The Non sinus rhythm, non sinus rhythm, some atrial rhythm may have P wave in front of every QRS, but with an abnormal P axis inverted in lead 2. This is inverted in lead 2. So sometimes the sinus or SI node is not taking the dominance of firing properties of the heart. The uh, atria may give impulse or give electricity. The rate, as I told you before, usual paper speed is 25 millimeter per second. So one millimeter equal to small square, which is 0.04 second. And five millimeter big square, 0.2 second. Calculate the atrial and ventricular rates vibratively if different. Many methods to estimate, as you know, for regular rhythm of 300, uh, divided by number of large square in between each consecutive R wave. So R, R QRS complex here from and from this area QRS complex R R interval. Check between two R, how many large square are there? Uh, for very fast rate, you may divide the uh, uh, 1500 divided by number of small square in between each consecutive R wave. For a regular rhythm, number of complexes on the rhythm set multiplied by six. For a regular rhythm, we calculate the heart rate. Here you see the resting heart rate will differ with age, as I told you, and the new net is the higher pulse rate, maybe 140, 150 beats per minute. As the child gets older, the heart rate will be decreased. 
So R2 is 85 to 125, R4 up to 115, 6 years to uh, up to 100. Uh, now we come to the QRS complex here, calculated using the HEXA axial reference system. <coughs> we usually use the lead one and lead AV, uh, AVF. So they are perpendicular on each other. So the electrical activity via the six limb leads. Uh, lead one, the R wave represents the left word force, the S wave the right word force. AVF, the R wave represents the downward force, and the S wave the upward force. This is the each one opposite to the other. The QRS axis varies with age, so at the unital period, range from plus. 30 to plus 180 degree. One month to three months, it get lesser. Plus 10 to plus 25. Get older three months to three years, range from plus 10 to 110. And over three years, uh, plus 60. Range from plus 20 to plus 120. Adult 50, range minus 30 to 105. So initial right axis on ECG is normal because, as I told you, because of right ventricular dominance and result after the first six months of life. An extreme superior axis, as you saw it in the neutral period, especially with tricuspid atresia, here the left ventricle is more dominant. So the axis is minus 90 to minus 180 degree is seen with AV canal or osteoprimum ASD and uh, tricuspid atresia. Here you see the PR interval in millisecond. You can check it. And also this one. Each color represents some interval according to the ECG tracing. Prolonged PR interval. Uh, first degree heart block may be normal or be seen in viral or rheumatic carditis and other myocardial dysfunction, certain congenital heart disease like Bistan, endocardial equation defect, ASD, digital toxicity, and hyperkalemia. You see PR interval is prolonged. So sometimes we give you an MCQ questions. PR interval is prolonged in the following, except. So you have to have some idea about the causes or etiologies of prolongation of PR interval. Short PR interval occur, occurs in Wolf Parkinson Y syndrome, which is a pre excitation syndrome, and the glycogen storage disease, uh, you know it, type 2, what do you call it? Oh, yes, Pompey disease. Variable PR interval occur in wandering atrial pacemaker when there is sick sinus syndrome and Winkiebach Mobitz type 1 second degree heart block. So here is the duration of QRS in millisecond as average and upper limit of normal. You should check it and see it. Prolonged QRS complex is characteristic of ventricular conduction disturbance. Ventricular conduction disturbance. Like in bundle branch block, pre-excitation of Wolf Parkinson White, intraventricular block, and ventricular arrhythmia, whatever the type of arrhythmia. Especially in VT, ventricular tachycardia. QT interval uh, varies with heart rate. So there is a formula used to correct QT interval for the heart rate. So we, we call it corrected QT. QT measured, you measure it normally, divided by square root square of RR interval, root square of RR interval. So normally QT corrected in less than six months, less than 0.49 second. And older than six months, less than 0.44 second. So when this is above this, you should call it uh, prolonged QT, prolonged QT. 
So you have to uh, use this formula to have correct EQT interval to say that this is uh, prolonged. So short correct EQT seen in hypercalcemia, the joxin effect, and congenital short QT syndrome. Prolonged in hypocalcemia, myocarditis, long QT as Roman Romano Ward syndrome, and uh, which is uh, autosomal dominant sometimes recessive with other abnormalities, especially hearing abnormalities. Family history sometimes positive. Head injury, you may have QT, and drugs like uh, macrolids, erythromycin group, and anti malarial group. So you have to, to be careful when you use this medication. Here, the P wave amplitude and the duration, normal P wave is less than 3 millimeter tall. Tall, we, we find it in the right atrial hypertrophy. M shape wave, you see it in left atrial hypertrophy. So, combination of tall and wide P wave occur in combined atrial hypertrophy. Wide and M shape left atrial peak T wave more than a three. You see, you see it in the right atrial hypertrophy. Cure simply to high cure simply to seen in the hypertrophy, whether left or right, according to the trace leads. Ventricular conduction disturbance, bundle branch block, or Farkas from White syndrome. Low cure amplitude, see in the hypothyroidism, obese children, myocarditis, and pericarditis, normal anymore. Ventricular hypertrophy, yield variation in one or more of the following areas. QRS6 is, it goes to the side of the ventricular enlargement, whether left or right. QRS voltage also and RS ratio or the T axis. Right ventricular hypertrophy features the axis is right, to deviation, voltage tall R and V1 and V4R, deep S wave and uh, V5 and V6. RS ratio abnormal in favor of right ventricular hypertrophy. An increased ratio more than upper limit for the child's age in V1 to V2. In the righteous lead. RS ratio in less than one in V6 after one month of age. Abnormal T wave, upright T wave in V1 and before R in children in three days to six years, provided that T wave are normal elsewhere. Upright in V6, this indicates significant threat into hypertrophy. As I told people, normally it is inverted T wave. So up to six years. I told you before it was four years, but here maybe extended to six years. Uh, abnormal Q wave, QR pattern in V1, small Q wave, tall R wave, highly specific for right ventricular hypertrophy. So the left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, left axis deviation for the child age, marked with left axis deviation, which is rare with left ventricular hypertrophy. I mean, marked. Uh, tall R wave in left chest leads to 5 and 6 Deep S wave in the right sided leads. V4, R, and V1, so deep S, which reflects the left ventricular voltage. RS is abnormal ratio, and V1 to V2, V2, here the S wave will be high. Decreaser ratio, because S is, is taller than R. Uh, 
Abnormal Q waves in V5 and V6 and inverted T wave in D1 ABL, so left ventricular strain pattern. By ventricular hypertrophy, you see positive voltage criteria for right uh, ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy with normal QRS duration. Also, criteria for right ventricle, left ventricle, relatively large voltage for both or other ventricles. Uh, large equiphasic QRS complexes in two or more limb leads and in mid precordial lead V2 to V5. Q wave, normal Q wave is narrow, 0.05, less than 0.03 seconds, usually less than 5 mm deep, and left precordial leads and AVF especially V5, V6 here. Maybe as deep as 8 mm in lead 3 uh, and, and should it less than 3 years. Q wave are abnormal if they appear in the right precordial lead V1, severe right ventricular hypertrophy to pain, are absent in the left precordial leads, left mental branch block, and are abnormally deep ventricular hypertrophy of the volume overload type. ST segment, uh, this is isoelectric, so elevation or depression is called abnormal, especially in cases of uh, myocarditis, pericarditis, infarction, or the Israel and children. Slim lead ST depression or elevation of up to one millimeter and up to 2 mm in left recordial leads, maybe V1 to V6. J point depression, the J points junction between uh, a QRS and ST segment is depressed without sustained ST depression. I was slowing ST, I will show you. Benign early repolarization. In adolescent ST segment is elevated. They call it uh, high uptake. High uptake, especially in young, in young children and young adult. Adolescent concave lead leads with an upright T wave, deeply inverted T wave, and this tracing. So characteristics characteristic ECG pattern. And pericarditis, if you pericardial effusion may produce as voltage of less than five. Why? Because there's a fluid. <coughs> sorry, fluid uh, uh, isolating the myocardium from the chest wall to be traced easily. So subpericardial myocardial damage cause time dependent changes. Initial y separate concave ST segment elevation and PR segment depression. ST segment. Return to normal within one to three weeks along with the flattening of T wave. T wave inversion with isoketric ST segment occurring from two to four weeks after the onset of pericarditis. So sometimes we call it non specific STT changes. In myocarditis, ECG findings are non specific. AV conduction disturbance ranging from PR prolongation to complete AV dissociation. Low QRS voltage, five and less. Uh, depression T wave, T wave amplitude decreased, QT prolongation, tachyarrhythmia including SVT, supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia. Pseudo infarction pattern with DBQ wave and poor R wave progression in precordial leads. Here you see some tracing of uh, ECG in children with hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia. You may see almost the same. Hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia. So there is elevation here, the amplitude of the T wave. Sorry, this is hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia. And this is hypocalcemia. So amplitude of the T wave will be changed. So in hypocalcemia, like hyperkalemia, you may have peak T wave, tall, tall T wave, 
as you see it in cases of hyperkalemia. In hyperkalemia, the T wave may be low amplitude. Low amplitude. So you see here depressed serum potassium, low. Depressed ST segment, diphasic T wave, positive and negative deflection, prominent T wave. Here, serum potassium is high, more than 6, tall T wave. More than 7.5, long PR interval prolongation with wide QRS duration and more than 9, absent P wave. There is no P wave and sinoatrial or sinusoidal wave. Even the QRS is abnormal. Here in hypokalemia, hypokalemia, uh, note the prolongation of electrical systole. Prolongation of electrical systole as evidenced by TU. This is a TU wave, uh, as well as depression of ST segment. Here, depression of ST segment. And V4 and V4R and V1, V2 segment depression. So the T wave is depressed or low voltage in cases of hypokalemia and peak T wave almost two thirds of the QRS complex. You should take it into consideration. Hypokalemia, hyperkalemia uh, antagonize. I mean reciprocal to hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia. Now we come to uh, important subjects you see now and then in pediatric age group uh, at any age, whenever, at any age, the elderly unit or, or infancy or older children and so on. So the heart rate will be 220 to, one, to 320 beat per minute and 150 to 250 in older children. There is rapid, regular, usually narrow. T wave is usually absent. If visible is abnormal in axis and may proceed or follow the QRS retrograde P waves. Most of pediatric dysrhythmia are SVT. So when you see tachycardia more than one, more than 200, 220 and so on, so you th should think of subarachnoid tachycardia, uh, and this is related mostly to reentrant circuit, reentrant types. Fifty percent of children with SVT will have no underlying congenital heart disease. Their heart is normal by echo and by clinical examination. Consider fever and drug exposure, especially sympathetic drug, which may initiate this type of arrhythmia. 25% will have congenital heart disease and one fourth will have wolf parkinson weiss syndrome. SVTB, SVT may be well tolerated in infant for 12-24 hours. I mean, they will not develop dyspnea, tachypnea, and heart failure. Congestive heart failure later manifests with irritability, poor, poor perfusion, poor feeding, pallor, and rapid deterioration. May, lo loss, may have loss of consciousness. More than 90% of, of white complex tachycardia and pediatrics are not ventricular tachycardia, but SVT. With aberrancy, SVT with, with, uh, with under branch block and pre existing cancer disease, or the type of accessory pathway re -internet. Do not use verapamine or beta blocker in infant or children with SVT. Why? Because it may cause profound AV block or negative inotropy and sudden death. And sudden death. Here you see tracing with a child with SVT around 250 beat per minute, pattern V1. Abnormal QRS, wide QRS, and the rate is very high, around 250. Here, the wolf parkinson weiss syndrome, uh, you see the uh, abnormal tracing of the QRS. This is a shoulder, shoulder wave called in the upright position, upsloping, and this is a shoulder wave with narrow QRS, sometimes wide QRS. 
YDQRS, especially here you see in this tracing. This Wolf, Wolf Parkinson Way syndrome, a six year old boy showing short PR interval, short PR interval, delta wave, which is very essential. You look for the delta wave here, here, and here. Also tracing here, delta wave or shoulder wave, mild QRS prolongation, mild QRS prolongation with right axis deviation. Especially when you check for the lead one and ABF. Where is ABF here? This is positive and this is also mainly positive. So right axis deviation. Dominant R wave in V1. Here, dominant R wave. And inverted biphasic T wave. This. <coughs> uh, V1 to V2 are normal for this. Q treatment of SVT, you, you know it. As you working in the emergency department, you may see now and then children with SVT. So aim to induce AV nodal slowing by vagal stimulation, uh, by massaging of carotid sinus in older children, and Valsalva maneuver. And you may use uh, ice plus water in back based on the face for 10 seconds adenosine half life of this drug is 1 1.5 second transient av nodal block as well as sinus node you may give 100 microgram per cage rapidly into a large vein repeat after two minutes cardioversion be very worried of cardioverting and an unstable child in svt uh, who remain conscious to the point of requiring sedation or anesthesia Rapid deterioration of SVT as stressed myocardium may occur with anesthesia. So if shock is a present, synchronous DC shock is indicated with 0.5 to 2 joule monophasic. Synchronized, don't forget. Chronic treatment is conducted as an inpatient, either medical or surgical catheterization pathway. They call it radiofrequency ablation after physiological studies. Here you see biventricular hyperatrophy, lead V1, left chest lead and right chest lead. R wave here. And you see right atrial enlargement, peaked P wave. Peaked P wave. This is the right mantle branch block. You see here, here, and here. Here also right ventricular hyperatrophy. You check it as a homework for you. Yeah, also, this is long QT syndrome. And these are the other tracing of ECG finding with peak T wave and hyperkalemia and calcium 5 hypercalcemia to all tinted T wave. So these are the your objectives, learning objective. And if you have any comment or any question or any addendum, you have to uh, write it down in Google Classroom. And I am very glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening.